Shalom. This message is called, It's All Coming to an End. The Lord wants me to deliver the following warning. He warns because he loves. On the 3rd and then again on the 7th of October 2021, he said to me, Isaiah 24, Both times I was actually praying about a long-standing biblical injustice in my life. He wants me to read Isaiah 24 to you. God's judgment on the earth. Behold, the Lord lays waste the earth and leaves it in ruins. He will distort its surface and scatter its inhabitants people and priest alike, servant and master, maid and mistress, buyer and seller, lender and borrower, creditor and debtor. The earth will be utterly laid waste and thoroughly plundered, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and withers, the world languishes and fades, the proud ones of the earth waste away. The earth is defiled by its people. They have transgressed the laws. They have overstepped the decrees and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore a curse has consumed the earth and its inhabitants must bear the guilt. The earth's dwellers have been burned and only a few survive. The new wine dries up, the wine withers, all the merrymakers now groan. The joyful tambourines have ceased, the noise of revellers has stopped, the joyful harp is silent. They no longer sing and drink wine, strong drink is bitter to those who consume it. The city of chaos is shattered, every house is closed to entry. In the streets they cry out for wine, all joy turns to gloom, rejoicing is exiled from the land. The city is left in ruins, its gate is reduced to rubble, so it will be on the earth and among the nations, like a harvested olive tree, like a gleaning after a grape harvest. They raise their voices, they shout for joy, from the west they proclaim the majesty of the Lord. Therefore glorify the Lord in the east, extol the name of the Lord, the God of Israel in the islands of the sea. From the ends of the earth we hear singing, glory to the righteous one. But I said, I'm wasting away, I'm wasting away, woe is me. The treacherous betray, he, he deals treacherously in treachery. Terror and pit and snare await you, O dweller of the earth. Whoever flees the sound of panic will fall into the pit, and whoever climbs from the pit will be caught in the snare, for the windows of heaven are open, and the foundations of the earth are shaken. The earth is utterly broken apart, the earth is split open, the earth is shaken violently, the earth staggers like a drunkard and sways like a shack. Earth's rebellion weighs it down, and it falls, never to rise again. In that day, the Lord will punish the host of proud ones and the kings of the earth below. They will be gathered together like prisoners in a pit, they will be confined to a dungeon and punished after many days. The moon will be disgraced and the sun will be ashamed. 
for the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his elders with great glory. Here is a short look through the Hebrew at two words he wanted me to focus on in verse 4, which were in red. What does it mean for the world and the majority in it to wither and to languish? Wither in the Hebrew is the verb root amal, and it means to be weak-willed, to droop, to be hot and feverish, to wither, languish, fade away, and faint. And languish in the same verse is naval, and it means to shrivel, decay, and to play the fool. This Hebrew root is the same as Nabal, the rich fool who died in his wealth. Because this letter in Hebrew is said either like a B or a V, depending on if it has a dot in it or not. This rich fool is described in Sam 1 Samuel 25 verses 1 to 42. This verb root where he gets his name means to act disdainfully toward God which Nabal did by disdaining God's anointed King David. It means to treat with contempt, dishonour, to come to naught, which means come to nothing. It means vile, foolish, to lack understanding, insolent, pride, disobedience to God. And this Hebrew root also means wineskin or wine jug if you change the vowels. Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew, says in Matthew 9 verse 17 that people do not pour new wine, that's God's humility and wisdom, into old wineskins, fools that treat God or his children with contempt, dishonour or pride. This word continues. There is no way out except Christ. You cannot prep your way out of the apocalypse. There is no way through humanly. Unlike what the movies would like you to think. Why? Because the word of the living God says so. Earth's rebellion weighs it down and it falls never to rise again. And that is truth for lender and borrower, multi-billionaire and the poorest person on earth, the land owners and land renters, the worldly and the religious, because it says the people and the priest, not the children of God, not the faithful, but the religious, those who are self-righteous. Rather than trusting, Yeshua is their only self-righteousness, that our righteousness is in you, Lord Yeshua. You are all we have. And when we die, as we all will do in one way or another, or we are translated, we all stand before God and all we have to plead is God's mercy over us according to what Yeshua, Jesus, has done for us. And lastly, this truth that the earth's rebellion weighs it down and it falls never to rise again is true for all employers as well as employees. Then he gave me Psalm 22 verse 5. They cried out to you and were set free. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. In Hebrew, set free here is malat, the verb root, and it means escape, to slip away, undisturbed, to deliver, and childbirth. He is referencing his rapture escape of his children. That's the only way out of the coming true events described in Isaiah 24. When I had finished reading Isaiah 24 out loud on the 7th of October in my times with him, 
I found myself quietly saying to him while looking out the window up at the sky, it's all coming to an end, isn't it? What the Lord is saying to me through my original prayers for earthly justice is deliver this message to other people of what my word says and what I am saying and do not be anxious about what I have already promised you I will deliver for you. Brothers and sisters in Yeshua, he will take care of us whether we are here for two more seconds, two more months, two more years, 20 more years or more. By delivering this loving warning message of Isaiah 24, I'm not saying the end of this planet will happen imminently, but I'm also not saying it won't. What he wants me to deliver is this truth. If we live as if Isaiah 24 will come as a matter of fact and that his rapture escape could happen at any moment. Our whole lives become holier, more eternity focused, more in love and intimate with him, more in holy fear of a holy God more repentant, more quickly forgiving all offences, knowing he is recording all evil for his judgments, more clinging to his word as truth, and more trusting him to take constant care of us. He loves to bless and he loves to warn because he is love and he is holy. By living soberly with Isaiah 24, we can know him more. Beautiful him, beautiful him, beautiful him. It's all coming to an end. Help me live even more in you, King Yeshua. Come, Lord Yeshua, to take your children home, home. Thank you that you are looking after your children until you do. Supernaturally being protected from and escaping all evil in the power and love of your name. Amen.